Yo guys, before we get into the video, if you do not have a yo-yo yet and you're looking to get one, you can head on over to evannagal.com, link will be in the description, and I just added a new starter pack that comes with the perfect yo-yo for beginners, some extra strings, and everything you need to get started. So go hide and over and check it out, and with that, let's get into the video. What's up guys? It is August 13th, 2018, and I just took home the World Yo-Yo Contest 2018 title. Oh my god! We are the my friends. And the World Yo-Yo Contest was held here in Shanghai, China. And there were so many good competitors. Honestly, a lot of the people that I competed against, I felt like deserved the title just as much as I did. But here we are. We got the trophy, took the dub, and I just wanted to go through with you guys what it took to become the world yo-yo champion because this was not an easy journey to say in the least. So first of all, this story begins in 1997 when I first started yo-yoing at one years old. And that might sound crazy to you, but it's true. I started yo-yoing because my dad was a salesman for yo-yos back in the day, back in like 1996. And there was a bunch of yo-yos all around me. And I just thought like, wow, everybody who's a human yo-yos and I'm a human. So maybe I should be yo-yoing as well. So I started yo-yoing when I was one years old. Um, and you know, by the age of four years old, I was on the Jay Leno show. Um, you know, some would call me a child prodigy of some sort. Point being, I've been yo-yoing for quite a long time. Um, so when I was six years old, I started going to school, went into kindergarten. I stopped yo-yoing as much because I had, you know, homework to do, probably more like video games to play and friends to meet. So then in 2009, I got back into yo-yoing. I was probably about 15 at the time, and I decided it was time to compete on the big stage. So I entered the national yo-yo contest that year, and I placed like 25th in prelims, which wasn't even the real contest. It was just a qualifying round to the actual contest. And then the next year, 2010, I competed at the world yo-yo contest, and I think I got like 30, no, no. I think I got like 43rd in prelims, something like that. Um, so I was pretty discouraged. I was kind of like, man, maybe I'm not that good at yo-yoing. So I took a break for a while. But then in 2015, I competed again in the World Yo-Yo Contest. And again, I did not make it past prelims. I got like 36th place or something like that. Um, but I don't know, I guess I just enjoyed to yo-yo at that point. It wasn't even about the contest. Um, and then in 2016, I finally made my first breakthrough when I won a regional contest. It was just a small little contest. Well, I wouldn't say it was small, but it was a regional contest, not quite as big as uh, the national or world titles. Um, and that kind of gave me the confidence to go into the World Year Contest that year, where I ended up actually making it to finals, where I placed, I believe, 13th place. And I felt really good because I'd never made it to finals at that contest before. So that was a really big accomplishment for me. And then in 2017, I won the US National Yo-Yo Contest. And oh my gosh, it was such a good feeling to be there. I actually cried tears of joy while getting my trophy there because I knew how much I worked for it and how much I just deserved to win that title. And here we are in 2018 with the freestyle that I have by far worked the hardest on out of any freestyle I've ever done in my life. And I did it. I won the title. Oh my gosh. What a crazy feeling that is. But to break it down even further, I did the calculations and I realized that I've been playing yo-yo for about 12 years total considering the breaks at about four hours a day, okay, times 365 days of the year. So I've been yo-yoing about 17,500 hours of my life. That's how much practice I put in before I finally took home the title. And getting specific for this World Yo-Yo Contest victory, I created my freestyle 
in December of last year and I was practicing my routine four hours a day up until the day of this contest. So I'm gonna do the math on that, but that's kind of a lot of hours that I've been practicing this routine. I think what this taught me more than anything was discipline. Like I did not feel like practicing every day, um, but I knew that I had to because this was such a big goal that I had. And so finally leading up to the contest, I wanna talk about some of the trials and tribulations I had here. Cause man, the last three or four days, I've had really bad food poisoning. And in Shanghai, I guess you have to be a little careful about the food you eat. Um, I was pretty careful. I, I only brushed my teeth with bottled water. I tried to take all the precautions, but somehow I must have eaten some bad seafood or something. I ended up getting um, a bug in my stomach and I was not feeling good at all. I was using the bathroom about, you know, every hour or so. And just really when I got on stage, I had like no energy. It was really, really intense because I knew this was the biggest moment of my life that I've been practicing for but I didn't feel like I had any energy to go up on stage. But something inside of me kicked in as I got to the stage and I just said, you know what? I need to do this. I need to use whatever like little ounce of energy that I have left to just do the best freestyle I possibly can do. So I went on stage. It was a little messier than I was hitting in practice but I used all my energy, I gave it my all that I could have, and it ended up being enough, and I took home the title. Whew! I can't believe I did it, because it's been a tough few days, man. I have been feeling sick to my stomach. I still am a bit sick right now, even, um, but, you know, I'm sick, and I took home the title, so I feel really good. But I think the moral of my story is that you know, success isn't always easy. It comes with a lot of challenges and sometimes it's not always pretty either. Um, I know definitely yesterday wasn't pretty. My toilet wasn't looking pretty either. Was that too much information? Uh, well anyways, success takes a lot of hard work and sometimes you work so hard and you don't even succeed. Um, you know, that's happened to me multiple times within the yo-yo scene. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's always a lesson and I hate to be so cliche about it But the times that I didn't succeed just taught me the things that I needed to learn so that I could eventually succeed And I really decided this year that I was gonna put in the time and effort I traveled to Japan to do training there kind of like Goku in his you know gravity chamber I went there and I practiced with some of the best players in the world. I went to Europe last year to learn about how they do judging there. And I've just been training so hard, uh, but it all pays off in the end. As long as you're willing to see the failures as a chance to learn something new. Like I said, it's very cliche, but there's a reason why it's told over and over and over again, right? Failure isn't really failure. God, I feel like such a cliche guy saying this, but failure is only failure if you decide to give up. If you don't decide to give up, you haven't failed yet. It just means that you have to go another round to try again. So with that, guys, I hope I inspired you at least a little bit today, or if not, I hope I at least gave you a little entertainment. And if you haven't already, check out my website, evannegal.com, where you can purchase the perfect yo-yo for beginners to intermediate to advanced uh, players. And you can also soon purchase the yo-yo that I used on stage. Let me go grab it. Called the Edge Beyond, and that's looking really good. So if you haven't already, go to evannegal.com and check it out. With that, guys, I love your faces. Goodbye. <laughs>